At the age of 35, Ludwig van Beethoven had pulled himself back from the brink of suicide after realizing he was going deaf. He came through the trauma with characteristic defiance. He was already one of the most celebrated composers in Europe and now embarked on a period of prodigious creativity. I think the originality and diversity of the music he kept creating were a direct consequence of his battle against the physical odds. It's almost as if he felt he was running out of time to express what it was he knew he had to express. The biggest and most immediate challenge facing him was the writing of an opera, the summit of ambition for any composer at this time. Europe in the early 1800s was in chaos. Napoleon's forces were sweeping across the continent, recently occupying Beethoven's home city of Vienna. Although dismayed by this act of aggression, the revolution's ideals of freedom, truth and equality resonated with Beethoven, and within them he found inspiration for his opera, entitled Leonora. This is a work full of fiery revolutionary fervor and idealism, where freedom and justice triumph. It's a rescue story, and for the first time in operatic history, it's a woman, Leonora, who becomes the story's hero by rescuing her husband Florestan, who lies imprisoned in a dungeon awaiting execution. And while the opera had been inspired by the revolution, it also fell victim to it. Yes, the occupation had dire consequences for the opera. And most of his friends and supporters had already left the city, and the opening night audience was made up almost entirely of French officers. Unfortunately, it was only under half full. Not good for business. I wouldn't have missed the premiere of a new work by my great friend Ludwig. Also, as a patron, I had to be there. But even disregarding the small audiences, there were problems with the work itself. It was too sophisticated. <laughs> too long. And frankly, it needed more drama. After the performance, to encourage Ludwig, I gathered some cast together to sing it through and to try to persuade him to make some cuts. Beethoven blamed the difficulties of the opera entirely on the tenor who was playing the husband, Florestan. Personally, I thought this a little unfair, but I arranged for another to sing the part. Ah, Herr Röckel, you've missed tea, but that may make you sing the part of a starving man all the better. <laughs> Let's start! Beethoven was prone to passionate outbursts, so I knew it would be a difficult evening. Floristan, Floristan. Excellent. I shall have to see to it that you are starved before every performance, and we shall be sure of a success. Hmm? You see, Litnovsky, every phrase is there for a reason. Yes, I agree. But that aria is not the problem. Making an opera is not like choosing which waistcoat to wear with a certain pair of breeches. It's uh, more complicated than that. 
please try to understand. People want drama, not just clever music. The first two acts are just too long. They can't be shortened. Ludwig, please. For my sake, for your friend's sake, please don't let this beautiful work be lost to the world simply because it needs some refining. So you're all agreed then? Well, then I shall have to go back to the beginning. Take another look at it. However flawed the dramatic structure of Leonora was, musically you can see in it many Beethoven hallmarks. And in the aria which Leonora herself sings, he uses orchestral instruments for their symbolic effect. The horns, for instance, are used in a completely new way. Traditionally, they represent and accompany a male hero, but here they're reserved for Leonora. And on one level, they give her added power, but on another, the way that they're pushed and tested beyond their limits potently mirrors Leonora's own trials. <laughs> I suppose the shortened work was a reasonable success, but it made neither Beethoven nor my theatre a huge amount of money. It was so damn stubborn. Idealistic, you see. I don't think you could possibly have given me my right percentage. It's just Well, we can only pay you your agreed percentage. Ludwig, please, do count it again. I don't need to count it again. I'm not stupid! You are only paid this very generous amount. <laughs> generous? <laughs> you are paid this very generous percentage because we all hold you in the highest esteem. But the fact remains, Ludwig, the house was under half full. Now, your music plays to a cultural audience, of course. Yes, it does. But, well, take the magic flute, for instance. Now, that really did rouse the multitude. I don't compose for the multitude. If we had paid Herr Mozart the same percentage of the receipts of his operas, well, he would have been a very rich man. What are you saying? Nothing. I... I think you should raise your Herr Mozart from the dead. Because the performances of this opera are finished. What do you mean? I mean what I said. Oh, now, Ludwig, please. Good day. Good God. Beethoven was true to his word and locked away the score of his opera, but he didn't forget it. In Leonora, he'd created the woman who perfectly embodied fidelity and womanhood. But in real life, she was much harder to find. Herr Beethoven had a great liking for female society. If ever he saw a charming face, we would often share a knowing look.